I'm Carl Wollen with Sherline Products. In this video, we're going to go over how to mount your optical encoder, your limit switches, and your limit switch mounts on a ball screw mill. Right here, we have our next gen mill uh, with nothing attached to it. The first thing we're going to go over is the optical encoder, and the first thing you have to do is put your encoder tack sticker on, which means I've got to take my motor and speed control off of here to get access to the end of the pulley. Uh, as far as the tools you need, you need a 5 30 seconds, 9 64, 3 30 seconds Allen wrench, a small Phillips head screwdriver, and that pretty much does everything for you. So to start with this, in order to remove your speed control and motor, there's just two screws here underneath and two screws on the side and we'll loosen the belt and pull this off. out of the side, on the side of the headstock, from the mounting bracket. Alright, we'll set that down there. Okay. Alright, we take the headstock off. So we've got the headstock off. Now we have our tack sticker, all right? You peel the back of the tack sticker off. It's, just so you can see, it's a very tight fit. You really can't put this on wrong or out of, out of concentricity with the spindle. So all you do is take the back off. What I suggest is you put it on folded like this a little bit. That way when it comes down, it'll stick here and here. And once it sticks there, then you can get it and smooth it out to the edges. All right. Once that guy's on, then we just mount the headstock back on and put the uh, spindle, the motor and spindle speed back on. Okay, we've got our spindle motor and spindle speed control back on. I've got all my parts laid out that I'm going to need for my optical encoder. Uh, the first thing we're going to put on is the cable bracket for the back side to hold your your DC motor cable and all your limit switch cables and optical encoder cables. And the way you do that is you just loosen the two screws that hold the motor bracket onto the side. And I'd back them out about three turns so you have some space. And this is set up so it's just got cutouts, so you have to remove it all the way. And then you just bring it up like so. And put it in. Sandwich it between the motor bracket and the headstock. Right there looks good. I'm just gonna tighten all these down again. And that guy's set. Now we're going to assemble the optical encoder and that gets done on this side of the machine. We have two holes right here. We have our spacer and bracket and we also have our optical encoder, our gauge piece, our, and our cover. Now, on the optical encoder it has two lines on either side of the mounting holes. The contact with anything that's uh, conducts electricity has to be inside those two lines. So we've cut away both sides of the uh, encoder bracket right here so it doesn't make contact with anything but that center surface. So first I'm going to put the encoder bracket on. Your optical encoder 
It has one screw right here or for the bracket for your cover. The encoder itself goes like so on top. And there's two 540 socket head cap screws that secure it in place. You can snug these down. So just snug on those, and that's good. If you look from the back side, you should be able to see both of the white lines on the back of the encoder, and they're not touching anything outside of those, so that's good. Then we have our spacer piece, and we have our 1032 screws. All we have to do is line up, pull this guy up so it's got some, some clearance. And put the second one in. So I go until they make contact, then back them out quarter turn. So right now your optical encoder floats free. We have our gauge piece which is 80 thousandths. The gauge piece goes between the LED readouts on the optical encoder and the pulley. If this is floating free nice and easy, if it's too loose, okay, then your bracket has the tendency of falling away from it like that and it's at an angle. And then when you tighten this down, it's actually forcing down on the encoder. So what you want to do is bring it in until it's just touching. Back out just a hair. So right now it's going up and down pretty straight. That looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it down and touch. And I'm going to hold on to it here. So it's just fingertip pressure. Tighten the top one. Just get them snug on both of them. When I pull out my gauge piece, there should be just a little bit of rub, and there, there is right there. So that's good. So you, when you press down with your finger, you're getting it aligned this way, this way, and in and out. So we're nice and square. And that gap right there is, is what we need to read the label correctly. Once I know the gap is set right, which it is, then I'm going to lock these guys down. So we snug up on both of them. They're getting, getting snug. Now the next thing we're going to put on is the optical encoder cover. Uh, what we found out the hard way was if you're in a room where the uh, overhead lighting is fluorescent, then there's not going to be any light interference with the optical encoder. However, the optical encoder has three LED lights that shine down onto the label and they're but then the light bounces back up. If you have uh, LED lighting, which we put in recently uh, for energy, energy saving, or you have any LED lights in the area, that LED light, the outside LED light, will reflect off of this, and your optical encoder will start giving you a bad reading. Uh, the RPMs will either jump around, or if you're doing um, single point threading, you're going to start cross-threading because it's getting bad signals off of your tax sticker. The cover is first and foremost to protect the optical encoder from any chips or anything that comes off of the work that you're doing and secondly to get rid of any exterior LED light interference. We've got one screw and it's just a little Phillips head button screw that goes through and holds the encoder cover in place. You can put it on there Now, if you look straight in here, right now it's touching the, the actual label. You don't want it to touch the label. What you want to do is pull it up just a little bit. Keep it nice and square. Pull it up a hair and snug this down. If you're off a little bit out of square, just loosen it up a little bit. 
and you don't want it to rub on your label at all. So right there is just enough clearance on the label and it's still shielding from exterior light on the LED. Before we get going on assembling the encoder, the optical encoder, it's imperative that you have all of your electricity turned off. Uh, your DC motor should be unplugged, your spindle control should be in the off position, your control box, all power here should be off so that you don't create a ground loop while we're hooking this up and short things out. If you assemble this with power on, there is a chance that you create a ground loop and what will most likely happen is you will fry your optical encoder. So first, things, first thing is to have the uh, power off everything. We have the cabling all set up for our optical encoder and the spindle control. And this cabling right here has the connection for the optical encoder and also has the grounding uh, wire which goes to the side of the headstock. But what I'm going to connect first, we're just going to connect the grounding wire. So we'll do that here. To do that, all you do is turn out your bottom motor bracket screw about three turns. Okay? And then it's a spade bit that's on the end with the grounding wire. And you just put that behind the washer. And hold that in place. And then just tighten down your bottom screw on your motor bracket again. So the grounding wire is connected. And then when we get going here and put the in, optical encoder in, we'll hook up the power to the optical encoder. Okay, our ground wire and our optical encoder are all hooked up and accurately aligned. The next thing we're going to do is hook up the power to the speed control. All of the limit switches are a two plug. The one for the speed control is a three plug. These only go in one way, so you can't put them in backwards. And that just clips in. So that's our speed control right there. So what I want to do now is we'll lower the headstock down and we'll wire tie all of our cable and wiring into our bracket here so it doesn't get in the way. So I'm lowering this guy down. So this cabling, and this cabling. Okay, first what I want to do is I don't want this to interfere with my spindle or the pulley at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip tie my grounding wire to my optical encoder cabling. I'm just going to take one of the zip ties and zip tie it right about here. And that will keep all of this from getting in the way of the spindle pulley. Then the next thing I'm going to do is wire tie these guys onto here. So in order to do that, I'm going to go through the one loop closest to the edge here. We'll give this guy a little bit of slack. I don't want to pinch any of the small wires into the side, so my small wires are going to be on top and my big uh, DC motor cable is going to be up against the edge here. And again, we'll zip tie these in place. Everything's out of the way. Good. All right, now I'm going to trim off the excess on the wire ties. You want to trim it as close to the, the knuckle as you can because any piece of this that's sticking out will actually cut you if you brush against it. So cut it all the way off right to the knuckle. That way there's no excess sticking out and nothing to get cut by. So that's got that right there. 
So that takes care of my speed control, my, my motor, and my optical encoder. And we're going to plug in the power to the, to the motor, and then we'll turn on the control. on right now. I hit my e-stop. Undo it. To get the password right here, it's capitals SP. And that takes care of that. Okay. I'm not going to be able to home out the machine just yet because I don't have everything hooked up. So the homing uh, button there is going to flash like that until I've got everything hooked up properly. I'm not going to go over the setting up the encoder, the signals right now because we did that in a, a previous video. So just check out the previous video. It goes over how to check your signal A, signal B, and your actual RPM readout to make sure that your gap is set correctly and everything's working fine. So the next thing we're going to go to is going to be uh, setting up the limit switches.